Oh, hello everybody, this is Dave, uh, and uh, this is episode 2 of uh, my new Minecraft series, uh, Minecraft Dave Season 2. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is using the uh, 1.2, uh, Minecraft 1.2 uh, engine. And uh, this is the guy we're running Bucket with, uh, if you remember Season 1. Uh, I started a whole new world with the Seed 2, and that was kind of neat, 2. And uh, we're, we've been building here ever since. And this is the original base. I'm still basically, this is my base operations. Uh, you can tell we've put some more chests in here just because, you know, for example, way too much cobblestone and a ridiculous amount of dirt. But I, 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 I don't like throwing stuff away, so I just end up storing all of that anyways you never know when you need dirt you know just when you think you're gonna throw all the way the dirt and then some some you run into across that one project where all of a sudden like oh man i need all that dirt where did i put it oh i threw it all away uh plenty of redstone random crap um yeah, saplings now i did a little project here um these are uh giant tree saplings or jungle tree saplings <clears throat> and you can make these to uh make the giant trees from the jungles uh, almost everywhere you want. I don't think you can do it in snowy biomes, but in, I know it works in plains biomes and regular forest biomes. You just plant four of these guys next to each other in a square. Throw some bone meal at them, boom, you get a giant tree, and uh, you can harvest a whole bunch of them, and I have a whole bunch of these. Now I'm doing the 1.2.4 uh, version of Minecraft, which means that uh, you can have different types of planks now, and I don't... Oh, wait, it's in here, yeah. Notice that this is kind of like a little bit more reddish colored than the standard wood. And that would be because uh, this is, in fact, uh, made from the uh, uh, giant trees, or the jungle trees. And Oops. So if I were to, of course, yeah, do a little experiment here. I want to show you something that's really neat here, but I'm going to try something here. Bam, 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 bam. No. Yeah, the stairs are still standard colored. And I didn't really need stairs, so I don't know why I made those, but... <laughs> oops. Yeah, I'll put you back there. Now here's some of the neat stuff. I, I, I kind of expanded outwards. Um, down here is the library. I don't know if I had this here, but uh, uh, one of the players wanted an uh, enchantment table, so I set one up really quick. I had some obsidian and diamond lying around, and of course some uh, reeds for the <clears throat> bookshelves and for making the, the table. And yeah, it's pretty standard. It's This is the maximum uh, efficiency configuration that you can have with the bookshelves. You can't get any better than this because the bookshelves power the table. Uh, but uh, the maximum that uh, you can put in there is 30 and this is exactly 30 bookshelves all arranged in the proper configuration you can see the letters just floating into the book now I showed this to my girlfriend Jennifer and uh, she uh, uh, she didn't like this uh, she didn't like the spooky basement so and she's a big she really likes to read books so unfortunately not too hot on the on, on, on the underground bookshelf let's go outside and so you've got <laughs> notice that we're not growing reeds here anymore we're growing cactuses i'm not sure what to do with these guys but i have them growing here uh, i've already got more than enough dye so we don't need the green dye anymore uh, notice that i've kind of fleshed this out a little bit uh, made this all into cobblestone i might make this a little nicer maybe replace some of this cobblestone with wooden steps i oh, see i needed those wooden steps after all but, uh, you know, now I can climb up and down the hill. I might expand on this a little bit because, yeah, sometimes I ignore the steps and go the other way. And then I'm like, oh, why didn't I build steps in the other place? Uh, this is the farm. You've probably seen this before. And before I show you the really cool thing, I'm going to show you this kind of expansion I made over here. This hill wasn't as big as I thought, or I actually made the, the farm much bigger because these are, these are like 21 by 21 square. Uh, and I have like four of them in a square configuration. So they're huge. And I just ran out of hill uh, there, so... Uh, in order to expand, uh, there's the pig farm, lots of linkers. I started off with three pigs here. Three pigs are the ancestors of all these guys. And the original three are probably still down there because I haven't killed any of them yet. Good thing there's no inbreeding in uh, Minecraft. That would just be kind of scary. Um, and here's our pumpkin farm and our melon farm. Uh, one of the players found some melon seeds and uh, left them in a chest, so I stole the seeds and I started to farm up, and pretty soon I had this nice little... A uh, patch of melons. Um, over there is my castle, which I'm still working on. I have plans for this. This will be very cool when I'm done with it. I have some vines on there. I might take those down. I just kind of threw them up there just to see what would happen. And, uh, yeah, they grew. 
but really I didn't do anything with that since the last video. Uh, hello, Mr. Chicken. And uh, we got our little tower of power that Kwame is working on. I am not exactly sure where he's going to go with that. He said it's going to be pretty huge when it's done with it, but he hasn't worked on it in a while. They've been, they've been doing their little jungle project, and uh, they got a nice little base going on way, way over there. That's where the jungle biome that they're, they're uh, working on. Now, the nice thing about the seed is that there's a ton of these jungle biomes uh, just nearby. So if I go in that direction, there's yet another jungle biome. Now, let's take a look at this guy over here. This is my reed farm, fully automated. Um, and it's huge, too. This thing has a maximum yield of two and a half stacks per yield. So it's, it's, it's big. It was a little bigger than I originally intended. Because uh, I just wanted to make a you know silly little reed farm, and um, I I made a mistake the first when I originally designed this because uh, I didn't realize that the old school method for harvesting reeds or sugar cane or whatever like that uh, I originally just had it so like there was like these streams at the top of it, and I had literally built this entire thing based on that design. So you hit a little lever, the pistons would go down, the water would flow forth, and theoretically the reeds would get yanked out of the ground, harvest them at the bottom, then you'd go back, come back up here and, uh, and replant everything, and you would get a lot of reeds that way. And uh, it wasn't a fully automated system, but uh, you could get a lot of reeds doing this method. And, you know, I don't mind replanting. And it was actually kind of a simpler design than this ended up being. Um, but uh, once I got uh, you know that done, and I should have really tested it, but I, then I found out that water, uh, as of 1.7, I think it was, was the version uh, of Minecraft where the uh, behavior of uh, reeds or sugar cane got retconned, apparently, um, and uh, Notch changed it so that water is no longer able to uproot reeds. It just reeds just block the water. <laughs> so... It was like, okay, well, that was a lot of work that was wasted. So I did manage to, uh, you know, I just had to expand this out by one block in either direction. And then I was able to salvage this, this whole design here, this whole structure, uh, for the most part, and built what you see here. And now I just have the two rows of reeds. Uh, but now, if you can probably kind of see, it's it's pistons now that that kind of drive the, uh, the the reed harvesting now, as opposed to having water do it. And uh, as you can tell, I have you know all these repeaters. I probably could have gotten away with not using these many repeaters. I, I, I think I just need to do one every other uh, uh, entry. The, the, the purpose of the repeaters here is like if you just hooked up the redstone directly, they can't be next to each other like this because the redstone just connects to itself and it never actually connects to these guys. You end up getting a short circuit. So you have to use repeaters because repeaters prevent cross connections. They, they, the, the current only flows in one direction. And then uh, a couple of them, there's some gaps here uh, that I filled in with glass and all that. But the, the gaps are there just because I needed a repeater to keep the current flowing in this direction. And this, this produces an average yield of a little under two and a half stacks. Um, it would be exactly two and a half stacks because that's exactly how many reeds would be generated or, you know, fragments would be generated to be carried down by the stream underground. But it's not perfect. Sometimes the reeds, they bounce off something and they don't quite make it into the water. They make it stuck on on, on uh, the edge here. or You know, they don't, they just don't quite make it into the water. So, like, out of, out of like, a two and a half stacks, which is 180 reed items that are dropped here about anywhere between 5 and 15 of them don't make it downstream that's that's actually not too bad I mean that's that's pretty pretty efficient uh, I mean it's more than enough reeds to do the job and uh, this is the maintenance area I even haven't labeled as such out you know on the door outside if you saw me coming in um, and this is where every all the magic happens and we got a full set of reeds ready to be harvested right now so now's a good a time as any to demonstrate and it doesn't take too long, so I'll just kind of like blah 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 while I, we wait for the reeds. Alright. Pull lever down to harvest reed. Pull lever up to reset pistons. I tried saying pistons, but there wasn't enough room on the sign. So, my it, it looks like poorly written English, but that was a limitation of the game, not a not, uh, limitation on my part. And notice the, the reeds all... Um, oops. <laughs> the reeds are all uh, coming in. And, uh, you know, I can put this back up again, and it looks like 
my teammates want me to go to bed here really quick. I should probably put a bed in this. Alright, I have to go all the way over here to take advantage of the sleep time. And the reeds will still be there when I get back. So, um, yeah, so the, it's a fully automated system. I don't have to do any replanting because the pistons only knock off the top parts of the reed. They do not knock off the... Uh, uh, the other parts of, uh, you know, the bottom parts, so the reeds are still there, they're still planted in the ground, and they grow, start growing immediately when, when the pistons are reset. That's only 10 minutes. I thought it was a 15 minute cycle from daytime to nighttime. I guess I was wrong. But uh, no, it's a very simple system. The lever's on the other side. You flip the lever, sets the current going, goes all the way up to the other side, and kicks off all the all the pistons, and we get reeds. I mean, yeah, this is a lot of reeds. So almost 180 of them are flowing down the the stream, and I'll wait for all of them to to gather at the bottom because it's kind of cool to see them all dancing like that. Like do do do. All right, so I don't have any read now. And now I have two stacks plus 29. So I only lost three of them that time. Now, I, I think like last time I lost like nine. <laughs> it, it's kind of random. Sometimes they all make, and most of them make it, sometimes a few more than others. Um, and I've already got the reset the switch. I thought about using a button, but the button doesn't stay active long enough because there's a delay uh, in the current getting to the pistons. I think it might be because of my repeater configuration of some sort, or maybe it just might be the nature of the beast. But uh, yeah, so that's the reed farm, fully automated. I over-engineered the heck out of it. I did not intend on doing that, but that's what, what ended up happening. Now, uh, has there been anything else? They are still working on the jungle base. I am not going to go there um, because uh, it's a work in progress and there's not a lot of room. They're, they're working on it right now, as a matter of fact. You saw Kwame. He was, he, that was him that was messaging me about going to bed and all that. I'm going to go to my other base. Um, and while we're heading over there, uh, I'll tell you about my nether adventures. I've been trying... Oops, I'm getting hungry here. Better take care of that before I run into something. Uh, occasionally you run into creepers in the daytime. You know, they get generated at night and they don't burn in the daytime like the skeletons and the zombies do. So sometimes they, they hang around a little bit and then you have a little unpleasant surprise waiting for you when you try to make a little shortcut through the woods. Like, hello, that's a nice base you got there. Kaboom! Yeah, I'm not, I, I'll never get tired of that meme. I think there's some sheep in the area. Um, I believe there's also some wolves. Alright, so... Oh. That's handy. I, no, a lot of times I end up running into... Oh, yeah, it's over there. Okay, so... I keep on going this way. I say hello to the pigs. Got lots of pigs over here. He. <laughs> I could have served my farm worth more than just the three pigs that I did because there's like an insane number of pigs hanging around over here. But uh, I chose not to do that because, um, am I going the right way? Yeah, this is the right way. I just ended up getting kind of sidetracked a little bit. I see trees over here that I didn't see before, so. I think, uh, I know I'm going in the right general direction here. Oh, I think that should be up it up ahead. Um, I think. Huh. Did I get lost? Or did I go the wrong direction? I think I went the wrong direction. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to find my way back here. Oops. I know where I am, kind of. How did I get lost? Oh, is this it over here? Apologize for the confusion, folks. I think uh, I got turned around in the woods there because I was busy blah blah blahing, saying hi to the sheep and the pigs. And I hope it's over here. Yeah, this is starting to look a little bit more familiar. 
Oh, watch, I'll get lost. So I'll have to hit F3 to find my way back. <laughs> oh, the fun, fun. Well, again, still got a few minutes left in my thing here. And up oh, there it is. Yeah, my cozy cottage. I need to put a marker up. So I went to the wrong desert, actually. Or, well, that might have been the right desert. It was just the wrong spot in the desert. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple of little deserts near the area. They're not huge, but uh, uh, this one I'm using for harvesting sand. And because uh, I was relying on some of the small beaches for my sand supply. And uh, there just wasn't nearly enough of it in the base. So I, I, I set this place up just as kind of like my little home away from home. It's uh, based off of the ever popular cozy cottage model. Um, slightly modified, of course. You know, I didn't follow any explicit directions. I just kind of like built it because I've built enough of these now where I kind of know exactly what it looks like. And it didn't look exactly the same as the last one, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. But this is I overlook my, my, my desert that I'm mining right now. Uh, this hill was a little bit bigger when I started. <laughs> it was two levels up. I've already taken probably about uh, about a dozen, almost two dozen stacks worth of sand from this place. And there's, there's plenty more of it where that came from. Um, and there's an underground cave around here too. Um, let's see if I can find it. It's, it's a little hole. And it's hilarious because you walk up to it and it's like, oh, it's a little hole. Not realizing, of course, oh, there it is. Not realizing that if you look down, it goes down a ways. Yeah, I kind of creep up on it a little bit. But yeah, that's a cave down there. That's I put some sand in here to plug this up, not realizing that the hole went down all the way. And that's where the sand block fell to. And there's actually, I think, three of them down there. So that's, that's yeah, that's like a little tower down there. And it's already, it's already looking pretty tiny. But yeah, this is... This is kind of like my home away from home, kind of like my base of operations when I want to get away from the other guys. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, yeah, this is it. Um, I'm going to stick around for a little bit. Um, <laughs> I don't, uh, <laughs> I ended up uh, losing my last set of armor. Oh, that, yeah, my story about the nether. Uh, so I haven't been in the nether lately because... Uh, uh, a couple of things happened. One of them, there was there was that bug, and I think I mentioned it in the last video. That there was a bug that caused the the nether uh, uh, gate to uh, when when you were on the nether side of it, it got generated on the top of the on the roof of the nether, which was all made of you know bedrock because there's bedrock on the top and then on the bottom layer. And of course, you can't really do much on the on the top level. It's just bedrock and some mushrooms up there. I don't understand where those came from, but. <laughs> <coughs> But, uh, yeah, so, so it was like I had to go into creative mode uh, uh, and cheat and, and, and bust through the bedrock um, just so I could make a, a path through my uh, nether gates into the, <clears throat> into the actual nether proper, uh, which was fine. It worked. You know, I closed it off. So, yeah, I was like, all right, this will work. You know, there's a bug, but we worked around it. It was okay. Well, they fixed that bug, but what they didn't, you know, warn me about was the fact that when I went back into the nether again, it would generate a whole new nether gate in, in the proper area where the nether was. It, it just basically ignored the one that was, that was generated previously and just made a whole new gate. Now, the good news was I was able to find the location of the old gate. It was still there. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to get the old location is because all my stuff was, like, all stored there, but... Um, uh, the new nether gate uh, was was located kind of in the middle, hot spot. There was a lot of uh, gas and, and zombie pigment all over the place. Uh, and zombie pigment aren't normally an issue, but while I, I, I thought it would be kind of fun to take down a few gas while I was down there, and I accidentally shot one of the zombie pigment. And it was like, you know, one of those really stupid shots, because there was a, you know, if you can imagine here in front of me, there was a gas and it was firing, firing up one of its fireballs at me. And I pulled back on, on on my arrow, and then the zombie pigment just walked right in front of me. So when I let go, hit him right there. It didn't kill him, so he got pissed, and he he you know started attacking me. And then all of his you know I started attacking him proper, and then all of his friends you know started getting joining in. I I ended up dying. You know I had enchanted armor on and everything like that, but it wasn't enough to protect me against like the swarm of zombie pigment that were attacking me all over the place. And there's an ancient well over there. We can go look at that really quick while we're waiting for the sun to set. But, uh, yeah, so, so, and the way the nether works is it kind of freezes whenever you're not there. So if I'm not there, then everything gets locked into place. And then if I try to go back, I don't know 
where that goes. Um, if I try to go back there, there's, they're still ticked at me. I have to like spend time in there. But this, the, the portal's not in a safe place. It's in the, mi it's in the middle of this swarm of really mad pigmen, and so I just don't go in there right now <laughs> at this time. Um, when I can maybe get my uh, enchanted diamond armor all set up, which I'm in the process of doing. Um, uh, oh, I, incidentally, I also have a uh, underground uh, uh, zombie dungeon that I use for experience farm. Uh, but yeah, this is what I found in the middle of the desert. I don't know what it's doing here. They just kind of appeared out of nowhere. No explanation as to why they're there. I think they just kind of put them in there just to get people kind of talking about them. Oh, it's getting dark. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. Oh, wait a minute. Where is. Yeah, I better get back home here. We're going to huff it here because we're running short in time. I want to go to sleep and I don't want to be attacked by skeletons. Or creepers or any of those other guys. Now, zombies can knock down wooden doors, but best of my knowledge, they can't knock down wooden fence doors. So, okay. No, that's not what I wanted to do, but thank you. All right. So there's the world. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, you know it's, it's been kind of a nice little spot that we got set up for ourselves. You know, we got lots of interesting biomes surrounding us, so and place plenty of interesting little projects all over the place. We got you know a massive underground cave system, complete with a ravine down underneath our base too, and that's kind of nice. So. Uh, that'll be fun to explore. I've already got part of that explored, and I'm getting all the iron and stuff out of that. Because uh, I, I, making all those pistons uh, required a lot of iron. There was 40 on each side, so 80 pistons total. That required uh, 80, 80 pistons, uh, a little over a stack. And, uh, yeah, iron is, you know, it, there's a lot of iron in Minecraft these days. It's not like the old days where it was kind of, like, scarce, and, you know, it kind of came out of, you, know, you had to dig really deep in order to find it. But you know, it, my uh, iron doesn't is not free. It it takes a while to gather that much, <laughs> so I have to go down there and gather yet more iron because I'm down to about thirty of it, uh, thirty uh, ingots now. So, uh, but uh, all right, well I'm gonna cut this video off. It's getting close to twenty five minutes long, and I think my YouTube limit is like half an hour or something like that. So I, I don't want to push that too much. It takes forever to upload these long videos. Anywho, uh, you have yourself a great evening, and we'll talk later. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.